and the success of his alternating current, Nikola Tesla was a celebrity. And he's friends with Mark Twain. He's friends with all manner of ambassadors and ballerinas and prima donnas. And he's really kind of at the height of society. Genius often comes with a price. Tesla suffered from bizarre compulsions, like his consuming need to rescue injured pigeons and nurse them back to health. He has an infirmary for them right outside his bedroom window where he's trying to heal, you know, some that have broken wings, broken legs. And in fact, at one point, he actually referred to one bird as his wife. And he said, you know, when she died, the inventive spirit left him. Tesla had a fear of germs, compelled him to wash his hands constantly. He did things in threes and was adamant about living at the New Yorker Hotel in a room with a number divisible by three. He demanded the room uh, 3327, where he lived for 10 years. He always requested nine napkins. And if he had a bread or something, it could be cut into nine, three times three pieces. Even the number of dishes he had or the number of towels he received in his room was usually three or nine. Tesla never married and claimed he was celibate. He had a horrible affliction against women with pierced ears. He couldn't stand the sight of pierced ears and jewelry. And pearl earrings, he said, just set his teeth on edge. It was almost like fingers on a chalkboard for him to see pearl earrings. Even with his list of obsessions and compulsions, Tesla had always been able to tap into his remarkable inventive intellect. In 1898, he gave birth to remote control when he demonstrated a six-foot-long radio wave-controlled boat at Madison Square Garden. <coughs> On a quiet lake in Riverside, California, Tesla's work is alive and well as a fleet of remote-controlled model boats set sail. This is very much like Tesla did 100 years ago. Inside these boats are the basic components of remote control Tesla conceived at the turn of the 20th century. A battery inside the remote control device sends power to an oscillator that converts it into a radio wave pulse. The radio wave is transmitted to a small receiver on the boat, which sends the electric pulse to a motor. Varying the pulse of the radio wave from the transmitter to the receiver, causes the motor's arms to move in different directions. Using a joystick, the operator controls the radio pulse signal and controls the boat. Tesla's remote control principles are seen today in everything from televisions to unmanned military predator drones used for battlefield reconnaissance to satellites operating in space. Although many of Tesla's inventions would prove to be a benefit to society, his visionary thoughts also traveled down a darker road to more frightening and destructive destinations. In 1917, Tesla proposed the concept of radio waves reflecting off objects to determine position and speed. That was 17 years before the invention of radar. Mad electricity will return on Modern Marvels, here on History. We now return to Mad Electricity on Modern Marvels. One of the most powerful forces in nature is an earthquake. Suppose that power was harnessed as a weapon Some believe Tesla may have discovered a way. The Tesla earthquake machine was a mechanical oscillator, which is basically a machine that produces vibrations. And by producing these vibrations, the machine could be made to resonate with different structures. The oscillator machine is based on the principle that every substance, when stimulated, has a resonant frequency. If the frequency is matched and amplified by an outside force, such as the oscillator machine, any material can be literally shaken to pieces. The destruction of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington in 1940 
demonstrated this principle. The winds whipping around the bridge hit just the right frequency, causing the steel bridge to sway violently in a rhythmic pattern that finally broke it apart. To demonstrate the power of resonance, we're going to see what happens to a wine glass as it vibrates to its breaking point. First, I'll start the glass vibrating and use a microphone connected to an oscilloscope to see what frequency the glass vibrates at. I'll then set that frequency on a signal generator, which is going to play it back through an amplifier into a speaker. Because the glass is going to be moving more than 400 times per second, we will be using a strobe light in order to slow down the motion. Now, this is going to be loud, so I have to wear some protection. As the vibrations increase in intensity, the glass will start to move more and more, and eventually it can't take it anymore. So as I turn up the volume, the glass will break. So what we saw was like a mini earthquake, and Tesla's earthquake machine would be able to do this, but on a much larger scale. In 1898, Tesla claimed to have created an oscillator with an adjustable frequency that was no bigger than an alarm clock, and wrote of an attempt to use it on a building under construction. In a few minutes, I felt the building beginning to tremble. 10 minutes more, and I could have laid it in the street. And with the same device, I could have dropped the Brooklyn Bridge into the East River in less than an hour. Perhaps this opened a Pandora's box during later experiments with the device. There's a, a legend that he started up his little oscillator, or what some call the earthquake machine, and he started vibrating lower Manhattan. And uh, they call went out to the police department, and the police came running. They are pounding on the door. They broke into his lab, and they saw him with a sledgehammer smashing the machine. The switch got stuck. He couldn't turn it off. And he almost brought down some buildings in the neighborhood. In 1934, Tesla conceived a death ray. His idea was to blast concentrated beams of particles, charged with millions of volts of electricity through the air which could down fleets of enemy aircraft at a distance of 250 miles. Tesla terrified people with this idea of the death ray. I mean, even the name death ray, it sounds like it's science fiction, right? Tesla spent his later years in two small rooms in the New Yorker Hotel. Today, room 3327, one of his rooms, shows the cramped space he occupied for the last 10 years of his life. Tesla died alone in his room at the hotel. They weren't even sure exactly when he died because people hadn't seen him for a couple of days. A chambermaid finally entered his room uh, the day after he died and found his body. But when his death at age 86 was discovered, the United States government took control of his scientific papers. There was a great deal of concern at the time of his death as to what was in his papers, because we were in the middle of World War II, and there's a great deal of concern, what if the Nazis get a hold of this? The government claims that after inspecting Tesla's papers, they were released in 1952, and later sent to Belgrade, Yugoslavia, where they now remain, at the Nikola Tesla Museum. However, many believe some of his papers are still missing. Who knows what were in these papers? You know, maybe they are very sensitive. Maybe they are the plans for the death ray. And, and, you know, I guess that shouldn't be public knowledge. It's a terrific mystery. Who took Nikola Tesla's papers? We may never know what all these papers contained. We do know, as his work is being reevaluated, that some of his ideas were a century ahead of his time. In fact, more than 100 years ago, Tesla was already green. In 1887, Tesla experimented with X-ray radiation, 
That was eight years before Wilhelm Röntgen, Dr.